Hey everybody, I'm here with my good buddy Tom Hatton, who has a huge company here in based in Arizona. It's uh, Mountainside Fitness, and he's got 18 locations, 1,400 employees, started from nothing. And uh, welcome, Tom. Thanks, Ken. Thanks so I want to chat about your new book, right? This just came out what uh, November, November. Yes. And um, you know, you and I met several times uh, as you were writing this, and I, I uh, first of all, congratulations for being vulnerable. <laughs> I mean, thank cause, you. Yeah, because you started a really, really rough place, right? Yeah, that's a, the book was kind of generated from a, a, a really bad time and moment in my life, and that's when I started writing. Well, and by the way, <laughs> which is therapeutic. Yeah, that's I think was what it was. That was the way I kind of got through everything that was going on was just to write it down because I w wasn't really able to process it otherwise. Yeah, I know. Well, we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are going to be listening, and, and um, I'm sure many, many of them have heard you. We definitely want to uh, have them read this book. It's uh, just hit number one on Amazon, Yep. right, yeah. which is great. Um, it's got some great legs and great momentum, but more importantly, some incredible stories. Um, so can you maybe just give everyone a, a, a taste or a flavor of what they might uh, read in this area? Thing? Yeah, you know, I think from somebody that started out a business in pure entrepreneur form, I was a kid, 22, left college early, had no money, and started this gym, and really just wanted to be open for two years, you know, and thought, okay, then I'll go get a real job and have a real career, whatever that'll be, and didn't and didn't really know what was coming out, but my mindset was just kind of attacking everything day by day, almost hour by hour. And then, you know, life just kind of happened and the company grew and, you know, I was learning things along the way and, and I had so little experience. It was all on job training. And the book came out. What, the reason I did is, you know, 20 something years had gone by. I think it was 22 or something. And um, I had just gotten through the uh, big recession, the crash. I yeah. mean, the crash. And in Arizona, it was attacked like the plague here. And it was it was it really attacked us in so many ways, but I had a whole portion of my company that was real estate that would buy the buildings in the ground, build it up for the actual business of the health clubs to be in. So although the health club business was doing really well, the real estate in Arizona in 2008 and nine was just crashing on top right. of itself. It really was. So I was sitting here trying to deal with that uh, at the time. And, and as it was tumbling down, was dealing with the fact that the only way to stop it in a lot of my deals was to have to file bankruptcy. So, uh, I, I did end up filing, uh, some chapter 11s, including my own. I think I was telling you earlier, yep. I had a hundred million dollars in personal guarantees at that point. So I had to file my own personal, uh, bankruptcy in 2012. And it was one of those things I was like, wow, I've been doing this for 20 years, almost 21 years. And on paper, I'm broke. Yeah. Now my business wasn't, but, but on paper, and it was just this really low, low time with yeah. a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that were just crazy. Um, that was overshadowing a really great career and all this amazing things that had happened, uh, that I talk about in the book that were really uh, awesome that you couldn't even dream about from there in that low point. Um, I started to write, say, okay, how did I get to this point? Which was actually sitting in jail after I got a DUI. Uh, which was in the middle of the realization of, you know, filing all the bankruptcies and, and uh, my, my closest friend uh, was really going through some really tough times and uh, my marriage was breaking up. There's just a lot of things that were happening. So at that point, I was like sitting in and I had to turn myself in and was sitting in the jail cell doing two days in 10 city for that. And I'm like, how did I get here? And that was a week after my best friend killed himself Oh wow! and sent me the key to his house to go find him and his whole family. So it was crazy. So I was like, this is, you couldn't write, you couldn't make this up from the good, the, the bad and the ugly. And how did I get here? And that's where it all began. Well, first of all, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for one, talking about it to putting it in a book. Because I think what happens, uh, obviously, you know, being in YPO, you know, <laughs> as you know, we're both in YPO, Young Presidents Organization. You pretty much have to speak this way. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's nothing but, uh, but full transparency. But it, most people don't. And I think that, um, you know, part of the secret, in my opinion, of growth is coming to terms with those things like you were just talking about. And, um, and I think a lot of people are going through these things and they oftentimes just bury them, compartmentalize them, don't deal with them, you know, and, and, um, I don't think that's good. And, uh, 
Agreed. You know, it's funny. I, I, you, uh, a uh, friend of both of ours, Tim Wolf, I remember he, yeah. we were informed together and Tim, I was kind of sharing everything little by little and he stopped and <laughs> he just yelled at me, man. Course, He's man. like, why are you not killing us everything? You know, we're here for you. And I was like, that was one of the best friend moments I ever had. Yeah. You know, it was beautiful. And, and I never stopped telling him. <laughs> He's yeah. like, yeah, stop now. Right, right. And then, then taking it from there and, and even discussing it like uh, on this podcast or in a book is, is another big point, but I'll tell you, from my own personal experience, um, people, when you do that, then there's this law of attraction, you know? Yeah. Isn't it interesting? It is really interesting. It's so true. That's well put. Absolutely. It's insane to me when you put yourself out there, which is hard to do, mm -hmm. stuff comes like, uh, like money and people and good people in your life and relationships get better. Isn't it true? It is. It, it was, I finally got to the point and this was like, you can't say I don't care, but I felt like I'd been through so much and got through the other side. And then we had a success. Like I can talk about this and all the mistakes and successes that I had. Cause I just am comfortable being vulnerable out there and maybe it'll help somebody go, Hey, you know what? This guy got through this and it was kind of similar to what I did. And, um, and that made me feel good. I can yeah. assure you that that's already happened. If, if you've put that it makes out you feel there, good. I can assure you, cause you know, I'm, I'm releasing my fifth book in uh, October Amazing. and same thing, you know, is from the ones I've had the emails and the texts and the people coming to the office here and the gifts and the things that show up when you go speak or whatever you didn't you go to like Russia or something? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, the, the first actually copies of this book were printed in Russian. Isn't that awesome? It, it was just that, you know, I have it framed in my office and like, you never, who would have thought that? I know, I part know. of the story is the story, right? It's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. That I, was an unbelievable right? example. Yeah, I got my son with me and you know, I'm there and there are all these people are coming up and I'm signing autographs to everybody and the books in Russian. And he's like, what is going on? And I'm like, I don't know. It's pretty Isn't fun. That? Well, the best part is, I, honestly, you know what, because um, we have a publishing business and what, 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 what I've found with books is that when, you know, when you write something that's super factual, um, you know, and, and like how to, you know, those books do okay. Mm -hmm. But when you write something from the heart, that's like fully transparent and you put your, you throw yourself on the sword or whatever you want to call it. Those books actually carry year to year to year to year. You know, like people read them for a different reason. They read them for emotion. Mm, that's you a know? good way to look at it. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank uh, you. I sure appreciate you all your help because you were a big, you know, confidant for me to just to help you along with yeah, that. Well, absolutely. I, I can't, uh, I can't wait for people to, to pick it up and read it. So, so we were talking about the business itself. Um, you know, obviously a lot of real estate folks, a lot of high net worth people listening and, and some that were just trying to, you know, figure it out. It's like you and I started, um, you know, what, what, what are, when you decided what location, you know, to go into, I've watched your company, you know, I've marveled at, you know, you've jumped into the circuit city when they went down and then you, <laughs> you put one in the bank, one ballpark, you know, which was brilliant. And you put one in the coyotes, uh, you know, the hockey arena and, and so you've got a credible eye for location. So what, what, what do you look at? What are the metrics, you know, when you're planting a gym? Yeah, I think that is something that had to evolve over time in, in how we did it. I, I first want to look at the opportunity and see, does it fit the current set, state of where our company is? Are we so outside the box or are we going backwards, so to speak? Um, and so the, it has to fit a lot of different um, boxes, so to speak, that I'm checking off, whether it's the demographics, it's dry patterns, it's a visibility, certainly a visibility. Um, and then where's the competition? And, and how is that market? Is it still a growing market if it's a suburb or is it already densely populated and I'm able to sneak in? So all those kind of factor into a location. It's probably, we say no nine and a half out of 10 times. I bet. And then, so we just, it's, our growth has been a little bit more slow and steady, you know, but I like our locations. <laughs> yeah. Amazing locations. Yeah. I mean, amazing. It's, uh, I, I always smile when I drive by, like I drove by the one one there, that new one over by desert Ridge, yeah. you know, I'm like, Oh my God, there he is again. A whole ground up deal. Yeah. Ground up deal, which is you was really our claim to fame. And that deal took two years. It seems like all the deals took two, about two years by the time I identified the dirt till, you know, we start going up with it. The, the new club that we're building right now is the first time I've ever, uh, in Paradise Valley, I bought a club that had tennis and a, and a regular club in there, and um, we're tearing it all down and building a new one. 
Uh, so it's unique. And that property was there for 40 years. And that was a relationship I had for 30 years with the owner. So it took a long time to get that deal done. Yeah, for sure. I'm <laughs> patient. Sure. Very. Yes, you are. Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> kind of, right? Yeah, I know. In some sense. Yes. So, okay. So let's say, um, you know, you want to, how are you funding your growth? Do you put business plans out? Do you know, do you, uh, you know, on, on like a ground up construction or whatever, are they all a little bit differently or, or how does that work? I think the, the model that we settled into right after the crash, we were really lucky and, and kind of fell into a, an amazing partnership with store capital. So they were, a uh, a REIT, a private REIT here in town in North Scottsdale. Um, and they started funding our deals. They like sin- single tenant big box operators. And so they were able to buy a lot of the real estate that I had and we stayed in as the tenant. And then as I started to go forward, um, they would go with me and we would identify the property. I like desert Ridge. Right. And then they would, um, be the landlord and we'd just be the tenant. So it's kind of like we would do the legwork and then Mm -hmm. we go, all right, guys, what do you think? Are you good with this? And they say, yeah. And they underwrite us as a, at a cap rate. So that's a different thing. That's, uh, I love that. Um, and we are probably into our seventh deal together. And since then, by the way, they've gone public. We were part of their road show when they went public and, and they just got, I don't know how much money Warren Buffett invested in them. So they've really gone. Congratulations. Yeah, so they're, but they're still just the same partner that we had, you know, five years ago. And that's kind of our model when we're doing, you know, something, you know, big box wise. So um, for a lot of the listeners here, um, when, when, when they're looking at you as an investment, mm-hmm. let's say you say, hey, you go to them, hey guys, I got this Desert Ridge right. location or Paradise Valley or whatever. Um, you know, what is it you bring to them and what do they look for? Because I think that might educate some of the folks here. You know, what are the metrics that they look for? Obviously they want their money back. That's right. Right. They want to make their return on it. And they they want to see that we're staying inside our lane as far as how we are identifying the, the opportunities that we're not doing something really crazy, but just because we're getting insecure about our growth or because the competition coming in, are we consistent with how they started with us? And I think for the most part we have, and I think that makes them feel comfortable. So they kind of identify it with us, go, yep, Tom, you're doing the same thing you did before. We like that. We know it's successful. Let's go forward. Okay, good. And then you meet with them regularly and and say, hey, here's what's going on in this club and with financials and all that. Not really. Uh, you know, it's funny. They're amazing. You know, it's fun because they, you know, once once that transaction's done and then we get the club open, they're the landlord, and then we handle all the triple nets. So, and I love that. I yeah. want to handle the property taxes and the and the maintenance of the property. So, um, we just make sure that our checks clear. You know, and that's it, you know, and and we try to, you know, if they want financial, I think we do it yearly. We send them updates on that, but they, they don't worry about it too much at this point. Yeah. If you think about it, the, you're like the, you have the perfect partnership because, you know, you've got a a group that has a bunch of capital Mm, Yes, and they, you know, they have the facility and they, they want an operator that pays them back. Right. Yeah. Over Uh, a long term, you know stipend or whatever you want to call it over a long period of time. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're buy and hold guys, you know, as a group. So we'll sign 15 year deals with two, five year options. And they want to see us all part of that 15 years, which is not necessarily normal in this you know market. That's a really good point because one of the things I talk a lot about is, you know, people are like, what well, at this last summit I just had, they're like, cause I sold uh 300 million, 14 projects, uh, $300 million worth of stuff. And everybody's like, well, why didn't you sell my deal? Why didn't you know, sell the deal I've been? <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, okay, guys. like That's funny. You know, because it's uh, short-term. People have a short-term mentality. Yeah. I, and I, my, 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 uh, what I say to them is, okay, so if I sold and you got all that cash, you would pay tax. And then what would you do with it? You know, and so it's interesting. You don't find a lot of times, uh, sometimes when you bring these institutions, like I did deals with GE Capital, Mm -hmm. uh, JP Morgan and and Lehman Brothers back in the day, you know, they want their money back in three to five years, period. That's it. And they don't care where the market is. That's what I learned (laughs) in early 2000s myself (laughs) is, you know, so we got Lehman money and, um, and then they're like, we want it back in three years. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like a project's not season. It's not ready yet. The market, you know, we've got a lot of growth. We don't care. They don't care. Right. They want it now. No, absolutely. And I see that even in our industry where PE, private equity groups are driving the industry, which is a little bit dangerous it for is. the franchisees or the franchisors of those models because it's their, their uh, rationale to why they want their money back is completely different than me. 
Well, that's why I love what you said is that you found a partner that's in it for the long term, just like you, you know, because yeah. what would happen is you would have a churn rate, you know, you would be selling clubs and rolling it. So your, your, you, you know, your net could stay the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you're working twice as hard. Absolutely. I think I figured that out in late <laughs> yeah. 1990s, early well, 2000s. Well, people don't realize that they do that in real estate. I'm like, I'm like, I go, okay, let me give you the best example. How much did you pay for your first house? Is it worth more or less? You know what I mean? Right. Like everybody's like, oh yeah, I wish I would have kept that. I'm like, exactly. Right. Right. So why are you flipping? You know, why are you, you know, churning and churning and churning and churning? It makes no sense because all you have to do, you pay tax, you pay commissions, and then you have to go out and do it again. A little, yeah. And there's that pressure to, 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 to yeah. refill it. Deploy capital again. Yeah. And, and then, you know, and everybody's trying to time the market. And that's why I'm at this conference. I said, I said, look, guys, I'm not trying to time the market. We made a lot of money. We bought these things in 08, 09, 2010. They mm. doubled in value. You guys have all killed it. We've killed it. It's time to move on, right? And, and you know, may, maybe there's a little meat on the bone for the next guy. Yeah. Who, who cares? It's sellable. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Right. So congratulations. So it's smart, though. Just You're right on it. Phenomenal partner. <laughs> well, I think it's a good lesson because a lot of people, they see these fix and flip shows and they see these... I always look at them like, oh my gosh, you guys are out of your mind, right? Because you got personal guarantees, you got all this upfront cash out of pocket, and then you sell it. So you make a little bit of money, and then you got to do it again. And yeah. at one point, right? Yeah. We've both the, been there. Yeah. What's the workload to the return manner? We've both been there. So, hey, yes. Tom, thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, I appreciate I can't, having me. Can't wait to uh, dive into this book, Dream On. Um, I really encourage you guys to, to buy this book. It's got great life stories in there about an entrepreneur all the proceeds too are every nickel is going to either make a wish or a muscular dystrophy association oh, so no, nice i'm not taking job. a dime out nice of this job, thing brother yeah, thanks even better so load up <laughs> buy them for all your employees there we go uh, thanks tom thank you Ken. <laughs>